Good evening, everybody. Uh, welcome to my Elvis Vinyl Bootleg Record uh, series on YouTube. Uh, tonight's episode, I'm going to give a very brief history of the bootleg industry in general, and then get into the first Elvis bootleg, and then some of the um, kind of essential materials that, if you're serious about collecting the uh, bootlegs of Elvis on vinyl, that it's worth seeking out to have. The first uh, bootleg in general, or the first modern one that's generally acknowledged, came out in 1969, and it was called The Great White Wonder. Uh, it's this album here. It's actually a Bob Dylan bootleg, and it was nicknamed The Great White Wonder for obvious reasons, that there was no graphics, there was no insert, no titles, nothing. It was all just this is how it came, and that's how it got the name The Great White Wonder. Additionally, there was nothing on the labels, just blank white labels. So unless you were a real Dylan aficionado, it was hard to figure out exactly what songs you were listening to, where they came from, uh, what the source was, who played on them, that kind of thing. Um, so that came out in 1969 from a couple of guys in California, and there is still some debate as to whether uh, that album originated in California or came out of uh, the Netherlands. Uh, there's a book coming out later this year about the Dutch bootleg industry, and hopefully that'll help clear that up. And speaking of the Netherlands and the Dutch, the first Elvis bootleg came out in 1970, and it was called Please Release Me. Now, this is the single that came out. Really nice cover. It's a pen and ink drawing of Elvis. Uh, the letter was done in kind of a cool font. Now, there was no cover for it. It was just this insert. Nothing on the back, but that's how it came. And then the... Uh, label was just a kind of yellowish cream colored uh sun was the name of it and the first song on it was my baby is gone and the other side is baby let's play house which is on that side my baby is gone was an unknown song that elvis recorded um, it was later recorded at a faster tempo um, i'm left you're right she's gone was how it ended up coming out. So no one knew that this actually existed until a Dutch fan was going through the Sun Warehouse and found an acetate that had this on it. And he was able to buy it from uh, one of Sam Phillips' brothers. He was obviously very excited about it. So he uh, brought it back and put it out as a bootleg. Now, I'm not sure if the single came first or if the album came first. Uh, but either either one, according to the book Bootleg Elvis, there were only a couple hundred of these pressed. So it was very rare, very hard to get. Uh, and it's a fairly valuable single. Uh, then we've got the 12-inch album. Again, please release me. It's got the same cover. And then on the back, it's got a track listing. Uh, so you're going to have an idea of all the songs that are on there. And then there's just a, a little bit of liner notes on it that'll tell you what it is. Uh, and then it'll tell you, like, the fame and fortune came from television, stuck on you came from television. Those were actually uh, songs on the Frank, Frank Sinatra show when Elvis got back from the Army. Uh, the Lady Loves Me was a duet with Ann Margaret from Viva Las Vegas that had never been out on... Um, on any album or single or EP by by either Elvis or Ann Margaret. So just to have that was a real find. Uh, and it got people excited about things, other things that hadn't been released. And then the record itself, it's got that same kind of color. And again, please release me. Uh, now, if you're wondering why the name please release me, the song please release me is not actually on the album or the single it's obviously kind of an inside joke that the uh producer of this album came out with to say these songs needed to be released 
Now, uh, this album has since been counterfeited. So you have to kind of be careful of which one that you're buying. A couple easy ways to tell. Uh, the original came in what you call kind of a European cover. It's pretty thin cardboard, uh, easy bend kind of thing. And then you'll notice that Elvis's backside doesn't go all the way to the edge of the album. So if you've got one where his backside is all the way to the edge and it's on the heavier, stiffer cardboard, then that's a counterfeit. And again, because of the this came out in 1970, it was the first Elvis bootleg ever done. It's still a pretty collectible album. Uh, you can find them on eBay every now and then. Uh, sometimes somebody can sneak one on Discogs. Um, but it's not the easiest album to find. If you can find a counterfeit, that's a pretty decent thing to have uh, to stick in your collection just to have a filler. Uh, onto some what I call indispensable guides. The first thing is a book called Jailhouse Rock. This came out in 1983 and was done by Howard DeWitt and Lee Cotton. And this covered all the bootlegs from the very first one the Please Release Me up until about 1982 or 1983 uh, with the Loving You recording sessions. There are some errors in the book as far as what's on some of the albums and they admittedly in here didn't have everything for review. So some of it was guesswork. That said, this is a great book to have if nothing else for the nostalgia of going back and reading about bootlegs from the beginning. There's also a really good chapter that talks about the Elvis bootleg ind industry uh, at that time. The second one that everybody kind of calls the, the Bible of Elvis bootlegs is this book, Bootleg Elvis. It was put out by uh, five guys from Europe, and this has virtually every Elvis bootleg single EP and album that's ever been manufactured up until the publication date. So there are some more recent bootlegs that aren't covered in here, uh, but they go in great depth as to what country the album came from, what songs, where the songs came from, uh, the various releases, whether it's a true first pressing or the second edition of a second pressing, whether it's a counterfeit, and then it'll go into the various counterfeits. There's an album called uh, Rock My Soul that I believe has 36 different pressings between the person that originally came out with it and uh, the last counterfeit. And they go into all the different variations of the cover, the color of the vinyl. Uh, it's an expensive book. They didn't print that many of them. So if you find one, kind of suck it up and buy it if you're that if you're interested because it's an indispensable book to have. A couple of years ago, uh, one of the guys that was involved in the bootleg Elvis book came out with this one. Uh, seven and 10 inch from cover to vinyl. And this is kind of a supplement. All this does is it shows, you know, I'll just give you a quick picture of it. It shows the seven and 10 inch bootlegs. So you're talking about the singles, EPs, and it's kind of like the maxi singles. They don't have the 12 inch one yet. Hopefully that's going to be out either at the very end of this year or early next year. Um, they're still finding new releases uh, or, you know, albums that came out years ago, but they're still finding that there's new releases coming out that they want to include, that kind of thing. So Again, it's it doesn't give you the contents of what the albums are, but it will give you all the variations of sleeve designs, label colors, and label differ differentiations, the whole thing. So again, this is one that is definitely worth going out to get. Uh, I've got between 12-inch albums, 10-inch albums, EPs, and singles, I've got about 230, 240 bootlegs. So I'm going to try to go over a couple of them uh, with each video. And I hope you see something that you like. Feel free to leave comments if you've got questions. 
Uh, I'm not an expert, but uh, I do have the resources to make me sound like an expert or at least uh, be able to give you a good answer. Thanks for watching and uh, wait for the next one.